so what I will be presenting at, at this uh, at this uh, plenary lecture is uh, that uh, indeed astrocyte can play a key role uh, in in brain diseases, uh, but I want to stress that uh, it depends on the on the on the disease that they are, the role is uh, can be very complex and and disease dependent or stage dependent. So um, for example, we have shown that uh, in the context of uh, Alzheimer's disease in mouse models, uh, when we block astrocyte uh, reactivity, we uh, see rather um, improvement in the disease, uh, suggesting that they were deleterious in the first place, and that was um, confirmed by other studies. But for example, in Huntington disease, we see uh, um, the opposite effect, and we, we published this uh, uh, this year in, in brain. So meaning that even if we do the same kind of manipulation to prevent astrocyte reactivity, we may have a very different uh, effect in disease. And that's possibly because astrocyte plays have so many functions in the brain uh, and they can change in very different ways in disease. So um, we really need to understand this very in, in much detail to be able to really fine tune the kind of manipulation we do to astrocyte to make them really supportive for neurons in a very specific disease context. So there is much to do still, <laughs> I think. So we worked in, uh, in two uh, mouse models of Alzheimer's disease, uh, one with amyloid only and one with amyloid and teropathy. And, um, and what we do is uh, we use viral vectors that target astrocytes, specifically in the mouse brain. So we target the hippocampus. And then uh, we block a signal in cascade, the JAK star 3 pathway, which is known to be really important for the transition of astrocyte to normal, uh, from a normal to reactive uh, state. And by doing uh, this inhibition in astrocyte, we are really able to, 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 re to, to reduce astrocyte reactivity and to control the reactive state. And by doing that, we saw that uh, blocking astrocyte reactivity reduces hamiloid deposition. It um, improved uh, learning on the Morris water maze, and it also uh, restored synaptic plasticity when we did uh, electrophysiological recording. So it improved several outcomes, but not all of them, because in the model with uh, tauopathy, we didn't find an improvement in uh, the hyperphosphorylation of tau, for example. So they do many things, the reactive astrocyte, they can influence many things, including plasticity, so really regulate synaptic transmission. They cannot um, correct everything. Also, probably it, uh, we need to target a different stage of the disease or manipulate different uh, cascade because here we targeted only one signal in cascade that is really efficient to, to reduce the signs of reactivity, but maybe um, we can fine tune even more. So this is uh, the next step, I guess. <laughs>